Let's build beautiful cars, but also make them simple. Our culture is somehow stuck. Why do you think our culture got stuck in that time period? How can we simplify the car components? And how can we design a car body that has very few intersection points so it will be easier to assemble on top of the scale? That's a very admirable and impressive goal. I worry it, it won't be as, as easy as you make it sound. Do you, do you worry about that ever? Or? It's difficult, right? That's what, what, that's what we sign up for. We're here remotely in Brooklyn, New York with CEO and co-founder Aaron Jarnison, who is building Olympian, which is a very unique take on cars. We just filmed with them on S3 a few months ago. And now since we started doing the podcast, we're filming this remotely here. Um, Aaron, thanks for taking the time to chat about all things uh, of interesting radical designs and modular production. I have, I have a lot of questions. Hey, Jason, thanks for having me. My first question is what, what was your background that led you to, you know, starting a, a, a new and, and very retro modern car company? My background is I'm an electrical engineer, um, particularly focusing on microelectronics and uh, start my career at Ford's R&D department in, in Europe. Uh, but I have a career, which is, I'm a semi-engineer, semi-finance guy. So I was, I worked in both investment banks and investment funds, as well as uh, high-tech companies like Qualcomm as well. And at Qualcomm, I was particularly focusing on autonomous driving, uh, car to vehicle, and uh, some satellite communications on the electric vehicles as well. And the idea to create Olympian Motors is, I realized there's a lack of efficiency uh, and, and lack of effective uh, car manufacturing capacity in the United States. So I see this is still be something that we need to fix. And it's a historical opportunity for an EV startup like Olympian Motors to enter the market and do two things different. Number one, beautiful cars, radical designs, and really touch the hearts of custom. And number two, most importantly, Olympian cars are modular, fully modular electric. I will be happy to get into the details, you know, in this call, but basically modular in three dimensions. Number one, modular hardware components, modular software components, and as well as um, the decentralized production pumps, basic the X, Y, Z dimensions, we are providing modularity. It's way different than how Tesla or Rivian is manufacturing the impost. I think for you and filming with you, what stuck out with me was how passionate you were about the artistry and the design of the cars. What about this style of design? What do you call it? And, and, and what about it do you like so much? I believe, first of all, I believe our culture is somehow stuck after 2000. When you look at the movies, you can see that there's a repetitive genre is called play over and over. Save for, if you go to a bar or restaurant, you can see that a lot of 1990s to early 2000s music still playing over there. Uh, you can see it on other areas uh, in our society, in our culture as well. Save for automotive. Basically, we, we ended up very identical car mods, car designs since 1990, 1980. Uh, you know, all the legacy auto was providing us all the standardized designs. But on the other side, customer has very diverse spike base, especially regarding the automotive side. Uh, that we would like to, at Wollington, we would like to cater to them, and we would like to provide a really elevated experience with electric vehicles. Because electric vehicle, in my eyes, and in our all in Olympian team's eyes, is not just an automotive product, but it's also consumer electronics device. So we tackle the problem in that way. Uh, so rather than just obsessing about typical uh, conventional automotive standardizations and procedures, no, we see them differently. Hey, this is a consumer electronics product, we would like to cater to customers' demands and also let's build something that they really want. You know, that's the Y Combinator's motto, but that's exactly what we do. We build cars that people want. Why do you think our culture got stuck uh, in that time period? That's hard to look. Before 2000, we have more uh, a monoculture. Monoculture in media, monoculture in Hollywood. And everyone knows the same celebrities, right? So we had, you know, all the actors, singers, everyone. 
And why you, once you go to school, go to work, everyone was talking about the same singer, actor, and so on. But now, like, entire media is decentralized. So someone is particularly uh, interested in, like, a YouTuber, and on the other side, on the other, someone is particularly following it, some, some Twitter accounts, right? So it's very decentralized. And, um, sir, that was not my, my main point. So let me, why our culture is stuck? That could be many reasons. That, but one of the reasons is that maybe monoculture is not existing anymore. Everything got decentralized. Uh, and this monoculture still keep repeating and producing the same old content before 2000. So that might be the reason. Well, hearing you talk about decentralized makes me think about the way you try to make cars. Um, in, a, in a decentralized production manner is what you've, you've told, told it to me as. Can you, can you elaborate more on what that means and why you think that's important? Olympian Motors is focusing on manufacturing beautiful vehicles and delivering to the customers, right? So that's our main goal. But when you look at the legacy auto OEMs and when you look at the, like that, the most important problems at these legacy auto OEMs, they are mostly related to managing a large labor organization. So, for example, take Ford as an example, right? Uh, Ford supposed to build electric vehicles or supposed to invent on autonomous driving or connected vehicle developments, right? Rather than doing it, Ford is uh, very busy with managing their entire large, like 200,000 labor organization. So what they would like to do, Olympian, we are basically... Um, uh, containerizing each steps of manufacturing and rather than building our own fancy large factory and uh, building a large labor organization we don't do that we are merely focusing on designing beautiful cars make it in a modular way make it easy to assemble so not just like one factory but now you have 200 factories across the united states building Olympian cars as a manufacturing franchisee. So that's our vision with our modular EV uh, at Dodge. I feel like most people in manufacturing would hear something like that and be pretty scared because that's 200 ways that your, your production line could get stopped. And the, the kind of new advice seems to be the factory is the product. So I'm, I'm curious why you think differently and why that doesn't phase you as much. So uh, uh, it, it also comes with a uh, Existing designs in the lab, if you look at legacy auto OEM products, existing cars, their designs are so complicated. But on the other side, I'm looking, automotive industry is more than 100 years old. So we are building cars for more than 100 years old. And if you look at the cars in 1920, and if you look at the cars in 2020, after 100 years, it's basically more or less the ge geometry is the same. Yes, some people will say, oh, we have like no more complicated body frames, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but at the end of the day, we have four wheels, a platform, a top hat on top of it. You know, we still have the steering wheel, mirrors, and so on. So like not a lot of things change. But what we would like to change, Jason, rather than complicating this vehicle architecture, we want to simplify. We want to simplify uh, body uh, architecture. We want to simplify hardware architecture, electronics architecture, and software architecture. So our idea is let's build, let's build beautiful cars, but also make them simple. So it can be produced in a decentralized way. Our vision to have a team of four assembly team, team of four employees, can easily assemble Olympian cars in four hours. That's our target. So think about like such an easy way of installation. And we are, we also, of course, um, we are using some uh, ML applications there uh, very effectively just to design that like smart joints uh, and try to avoid using screws and valves as, as much as possible. So everything is modular, easy to fit and more have a plug and play feeling rather than a complicated line of manufacturing. Uh, that's a very admirable and impressive goal. I I, I worry it, it won't be as, as easy as you make it sound. Do you do you worry about that ever, or, or how do you think about that problem? So of course it's difficult, right? That's what what that's what we sign up for. That's why 
I quit my previous job. That's why our other co-founders and engineers quit their job at Ford, Media, Tesla, and joined this team, right? So we sign up for this challenging task. But let me tell you this, not even a single day since we found Olympian Motors, get it, the YC, investments, pre-seed, seed, series, not even a single day I thought that we will fit. So I'm super optimistic about uh, our future. I'm super optimistic about um, what Olympian could build and could offer in the market. Awesome. Um, from the time you founded to now, what are some of the highlights uh, in building the company that you think of? Basically, the, the time we started the company was the time that basic startup and VC environment was changing. It was the beginning of uh, end of 2021, beginning of 2022. The fundraising environment changed dramatically, as you know. Uh, and also the type of entrepreneurs uh, changed too. Uh, and also type of employees, the early employees, the nature of early employees in my mind changed dramatically after 2022. So uh, uh, that means basically rather than, you know, uh, fancy chairs and milkshakes and throwing uh, parties, this is where we end up, right? Uh, but I think what I believe, that's the future of startups moving forward. So the real entrepreneurs, the real builders who really put their hard mind and hard working into, into their business, into their startup, they will try the, the the party time is over. Now it's time for, I would say, the real entrepreneurs with great with a great vision. Now it's 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 their time. So it's time for real hardware, hard tech, deep tech people to build, is what you're saying. Hundred percent, because on the other side, like AI is basically challenging the software part. B two B SaaS companies like dramatically, right? I talked to a lot of founders. Uh, who very talented guys, by the way, very talented engineers. Uh, but, you know, for them, starting a B2B SaaS company made a lot of sense like 10 years ago. But that moving forward, as of 2024, we ended up in a point that AI is basically challenging all these SaaS applications. And hardware is a space that you can still build your own mode and you can still leverage AI, but AI is more like a tool rather than a competitor to the company. What are some of the most important design elements to consider in designing a beautiful car? I think you have some unique opinions on that. <laughs> yes. Um, regarding the design, we have two models, right? Model O1, people name it as James Bond electric vehicles. Uh, and Model 84, more of a, I would say, cute version of Cybertruck or more of a California people. Uh, and our intention is to introduce more designs, more radical designs to the market moving forward. And we will be challenging, we are, we are going to challenge the core geometry of the cars. Because so far, if you look at all the SUVs, they look like a, a fish. Right, a typical like a, a very standardized designs, and the question is, why do why why don't we have cars look like a like a triangle and maybe like a big circle on wheels or like a look like a two story cars? Right, uh, again, our idea with the new models to challenge the industry with more radical designs, but some radical, but something that people will enjoy. People will say, hey, I really like this car. Right, uh. And the, the origination point we started with, of course, with the Model 01, it was a little bit, when we look at the cars from 1930s to 1970s, we got inspiration from that Art Deco uh, designs. We got inspiration from that, you know, elevated level of aesthetics. And the question was, why we are not building these beautiful cars anymore? And now we have an electrified architecture, which is much way, much way easier to build and sustain compared to IC uh, base cars. So, um, and our idea was let's build cars that looks beautiful. So we got the inspiration from mid-century America. We got the inspiration from 1980s, uh, the, the early wave of uh, the, the synth wave cyber, cyber park uh, trend that you can, we can put it that way. And our new models will be have reference to 
completely different stuff. But our idea is let's bring diversification. Let's bring color. Color is also another element I want to uh, mention about a little bit too. If you look at the chart, like anyone can go and Google that, that chart, right? So the color uh, percentage breakdown in automotive industry. Like in 1950s, we have a lot of red, yellow, green cars. And over years, it's, it's basically dominated by black and white and, and gray. Like right now, 90% of the cars today are all, all black, white, or gray. So that's even the, another dimension you want to change. And number three, again, it's all about the product that we are building. So uh, we reject the space space. We don't like 2D, uh, we don't like monitors inside the car. Like Tesla has a huge, Tesla is a great car. I admire Tesla. Like such a beautiful company, such a successful product, right? But it doesn't mean that they are doing everything car. So uh, starting with their monitor, like a huge monitor display screen on, in, in their dashboard, is distracting, not safe for drivers, not safe for passengers, not safe for the verbal society. And number three, like we are looking at our smartphones all day, we are in front of our laptop uh, or, or our machines, and we get into our car and now another huge screen, huge monitor that we can't even change AC settings. We, we, we can't even simply change volume on and off, right? So you need to click a few buttons, like UI is not the perfect. So what we would like to do instead, we want to remove display screens and provide more minimalistic, more like a refined dashboard. And only thing you need in Olympian cars is your smartphone. Because we said, if you have a smartphone, you have navigation, you have CarPlay, you have Spotify, you have YouTube music, you have everything we need in the car. No need to duplicate that user experience again on the display screen. No need. So we are basically simplifying, removing the display screen, bring minimalism, and operate our infotainment system with smartphone. You mentioned while filming that a lot of European customers really liked the idea of what you're building and liked the designs and, and maybe felt that other EVs on the market weren't in line with what they wanted to drive and be seen in an experience. Uh, but, and that was what was holding them back from switching to an EV. Can you talk more about that experience and why they think, why you think they like your, your designs much more? But people ask us, hey, what's your target customer? And I told them there is a short version of this answer, a long version of this answer. Well, you can, you can give us the long version here, so. Yeah, like short version is uh, man or woman in midlife crisis. They <laughs> love our cars, right? So they love our cars. And like, that's why like when you, you come to that age, you have some disposable income. Where else are you going to spend this money? Okay, you, you, you pay for your kids' tuition and some other stuff. But yeah, you can buy a summer house. But, you know, you can also buy a car for yourself. So that's like one thing. But the long version. We saw a lot of young people. They don't want to drive the same brands as their parents. Uh, the, 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 the parents did. You know, like we, we saw the similar trends in, in, in the consumer electronics uh, in market. You know, we can see the similar trends in, 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 in other like, uh, uh, products you know, today as well. It's same for automotive as well. Young people want to try different brands. And Olympian is providing them a really good store. Uh, and number two, particularly, like, it's appealing to, uh, the, especially the, the, I would say, coastal regions of the United States, as well as, uh, uh, it's also appealing to the European customers as well. But particularly, we are right now focusing on the United States. And our next market to focus on will be Japan and China. Europe actually coming a little bit later stage because we think that European market is a little bit slow uh, to adapt. Like EV, okay, but uh, the, the current regulatory environment is not the very, very, very friendly for uh, an EV startup to operate right there. So that's why we said United States first and then Japan and maybe China. Do you ever worry that the designs are too radical? Like obviously that's why you started the company, right? 
but then you have the rest of the world is becoming more monotone. These kind of same silhouettes. Does that ever does that ever worry you once once in a blue moon? I mean, uh, compared to other things that worry me, uh, it's just like a peanut, I would say. Uh, but that being said, I am proud of creating something different, and I don't think it's it's a challenge for the company. I don't think that if even make things easier for Olympian motors because people. So again, two ways, right? Number one, radical designs. Number two, modular cars. And they are somehow intertwined, interconnected to each other. But with the design aspect of the things, the design, I'm proud of our designs. Our designs are speaking to the souls of our customers. So we already built a good pre-order pipeline. It will be enough for us in the next two to three years. So uh, that's demonstrating that we are touching the right points in the market. But what excites me a lot about the Grand Vision is, is our modular electric vehicles. To repeat again, modular means absolutely super easy assembly and super easy manufacturing of our parts. Rather like if you look at that, that an average car, an average car has more than 3,000 to 4,000 components and tiny little parts. In Olympian, we wanted to decrease the number of components that goes inside the car. And we made a couple of uh, product decisions. For example, our mirrors, like very basic example, our mirrors are offline mirrors, basically like conventional mirror. They are not electrified. Our mirrors do not have any cameras or any sensors. But each product decision towards simplification, it could be mirrors, it could be seats, steering wheel, and, and, all, and many other sensors that you, you may find in a Tesla car. By simplifying these things and removing the redundant, excessive uh, uh, components from the car and make it pure, make it simple, also make it really easy to assemble as well. And our idea is to use the same skateboard platform and use the same centralized computing unit and the same Olympian OS software modules for all of our models, more of a plug and play. And our idea is while building the, the Olympian cars, we want to be developed as an Android of electric vehicles. Android, as modular as Android. So anyone, any application developer, any software, could be infotainment, could be OTA, could be a cloud automotive a software provider, can easily connect with our cars and communicate with real-time data. They can easily deploy their solutions. Well, we would like to standardize that connections. We have a lack of standardization today. And the, the second dimension is the hardware connection. So we want to develop a centralized wiring harness and centralized uh, computing unit that you can deploy your hardware solution. It might be a robotic arm or it might be a, a military application or it might be a, a, a healthcare application on top of our a modular platform. So you can basically connect our existing sockets and that sockets will be enough to power your signals, your power, low voltage, high voltage, anything. So idea is to provide that mobility platform for everyone. Hey, come here, deploy your solution right away and bring it to the market. None of the other electric vehicle players, including Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, Ford, General Motors, no one is providing that open, open modular platform to the customers. So that's also the direction, the grand vision we would like to uh, uh, we would like to go, and most importantly, Jason, that's including uh, ML inference application that can run on top of this platform as well. So when we, again, when we are talking about the modularity, it's three dimensions: X, Y, Z dimensions. X dimension is uh, modularized production. Y dimension is modularized hardware and modularized software and ML applications. So that's what we would like to do with Olympian, uh, Olympian virtual platform. And in terms of, like you mentioned, using the same skateboard, using the same compute module, and this idea of creating a, a non-vertical, open, open-ended product for, for data partners and other customers, how does the... Do you ever so you, like? How, do you ever worry about the supply chain that comes with that, or like 
it sounds like the assembly you're designing to be easier than normal, but in terms of getting the skateboards you need or various parts of things or having the massive infrastructure needed to manufacture these these things, how do you how are you thinking about that at this stage? So yeah, very good question. So uh, regarding the skateboard, we are working with multiple vendors today. And uh, some of these vendors based in the U.S., some of these vendors based in Taiwan and China and, and, and Mexico. By standardizing our designs, actually we will be able to tap into the multiple skateboard vendors at the same time, which is mitigating the risk of supply chain. Uh, so uh, in that sense, if you would like to sell 10,000 cars by 2025, we can actually do that. Like Rivian, it took for them 12 years. For Rivian, it took them 12 years to scale even up to 50 cups. But 12 long years, and they raised $2 billion, you know. Lucid Motors, the same. It took them for nine years to even make the first commercial ship. And of course, $1.5 billion. What we would like to do, a modular approach. We, have, we don't have any capacity constraints from our supplier side. And we are solving the manufacturing and assembly bottleneck by decentralizing our production into multiple production hubs. Today we are in Brooklyn. We have another facility, a, a micro facility in Detroit, and another facility we are opening up in El Segundo, uh, Los Angeles. And our intention is to grow that number of production hubs in the United States to 200 by the end of 2025. It may sound crazy to you. But again, think about yourself. Think about Olympian modular cars as a like Android for electric, Raspberry Pi for Android and electric vehicles. Come, connect, deploy your solution, connect with user your IPIs, use our existing protocols. So you are ready to go. Otherwise, I know that this is a pain point for a lot of startup companies, especially focused on the automotive side. You know, legacy auto EMs really long cycles. Like if you want to sell something to then had legacy auto EMs, it took like three years, four years, even like more than five years to even like the start the pilot port. We are solving that problem. Basically, uh, think about like how Android provided an open platform or Raspberry Pi for the makers, right? So we are going to do the same point. So it, it was a few months ago that we filmed uh, the episode, and now we're, we're doing the follow-on podcast uh, because we decided to start doing that since then. What's new with, with Olympian? We had, since then, we had a lot of progress. Uh, it was, correct me if I'm right, it was November or December time frame. Uh, right now, we are opening up uh, our new facility, uh, a small facility in El Segundo, number one. Number two... Uh, we showcased our uh, Model O1 and our skateboard uh, in CES, Las Vegas, back in January. So um, that was a great uh, event for us. We received a lot of positive feedback from industry as well as our customers as well. A couple of our customers, inventors, also visited us there and we will be able to connect with our suppliers, customers, and investors. That was a, a, a great, successful event for us. And uh, again, as a startup company, uh, it just like, took two years for us to be in CES. So it's also another great achievement. Um, and number three, of course, uh, Olympian Motors now is getting recognized by uh, by the by the industry and as well as uh, the, the, the general media as well. Uh, we are receiving a lot of inbound requests. They're asking for partnerships, as asking for joint IP development, and asking for uh, joining our decentralized production hubs. We are receiving in a request from uh, Bay Area, uh, uh, Washington, uh, Arizona, uh, again, Florida, uh, uh, these are all builders who would like to be a part of Olympia's decentralized manufacturing network. Uh, so we are definitely seeing a, a, a tremendous growth since that in the last two to three months, like was crazy for us. Uh, and good, and the most important, right? So we, uh, we kick-started our uh, initial batch of production with Model 01 and Model 84. So people are asking us, why two vehicles? And we tell them, hey, it's so, we made it so easy. 
So we can even do four vehicle designs at the same time. Of course, we don't want to uh, blow our cash flow and want to be mindful of our resources as well, given that a lot of things going on at the moment. But uh, uh, introducing two vehicles at the same time will be uh, will, will demonstrate the capability uh, well, how capable our modular EVs will be in the future. And the one last update, right? So now we are getting ready for demo days. Uh, we are planning for demo day events in SF, LA, New York, and Miami. So these are the four cities that we are particularly focusing on in the beginning. Um, so we are organizing demo days and invest, inviting um, our customers, suppliers and anyone who's interested to come and test drive our vehicles and feel 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 olympian in, in person what do you think most deep tech startups get wrong in in building hard technology creating a deep tech startup is definitely that it should be the the north star of entrepreneurs in 21st century so we need more i think deep tech can be categorized into some sub-segments, so I don't want to get into the details, but I will say this. For especially deep tech startups or hardware technology companies in general, I will say never lose the sight, uh, never lose the connection with your customers. Some people may build satellites, okay, but still know what your customer wants and what's the end goal, what's the use case. Some people build a lot of robotic arms flowing around, like a lot of robotic arm uh, startups. And I'm sure that each one of them, each single founder, probably they are doing great things, but they need to focus on what problem they are solving and what, what's the willingness to pay of, uh, from customers. So, uh, because like, it's so easy to lose the site and lose the uh, connection with customers when you are developing something deep tech, you can basically, you know, two or three months, four months may pass and Basically, you ended up in a situation that you are all surrounded by deep, difficult engineering problems. Yes, it's very important, but also at the end of the day, uh, hardware startups, deep tech startups should generate cash flow. Uh, so it, it makes it only easier to, to build the company. So uh, not losing the side, not always keeping the use case the priority rather than obsessing on some particular engineering challenge. I know it's like everyone likes obsessing about some part, solving some particular engineering challenge. I know it's fun. I know it's enticing and, you know, for me too, like I can be easily stay until 5 a.m. if I'm solving on an engineering problem. But on the other side, keeping the use case always alive and uh, as relatable, relevant to the customers, that should be that should be an important part for hardware science. Speaking of of hard engineering problems, what what's been the hardest uh, engineering problem you've you guys have solved to date? So, like one uh, particular problem is of course uh, uh, building our uh, centralized computing unit on top of our skateboard to power Olympian OS. Number one. Number two. So we are basically uh, for building our own version of GigaCast. Tesla has a GigaCast. We also have our own version of it. Uh, because, so we are at the building our budding invite, like the exoskeleton of the car, uh, in as few words, as few pieces as possible. So we would like to, uh, uh, they'd only have uh, like four components for our metals and, and body structure. So that was the hardest challenge that we, uh, we are trying to solve. Basically, how can we simplify the car components? And how can we design um, uh, a, a body, a car body, that has a, a very few intersection, intersection points, requires uh, fewer joints and fewer mounting points. So it will be easier to assemble on top of the skill. Uh, and it also comes with uh, uh, and basically like the, the, the metal, aluminum, and steel manufacturing uh, problems too. 
which is uh, also another important problem right now in the United States. And we have our own solutions, like we are using gravity casting very efficiently right now to basically build our uh, full uh, uh, body in one piece. Uh, we are also getting advantage of some 3D sand printers. 3D sand printers, I think, in my opinion, is the, the frontier for the steel manufacturing. So we are taking advantage of that. But it comes down to the point that how can we design a chassis, a body, and mounting parts that should be so easy to manufacture and so easy to assemble? So as you, as you can see, it starts from basically design file, fabrication, and assembly. So these three points are actually very connected to each other. So garbage in, garbage out. Design should be so good and so good and so that so so should should be built by uh, should be built to manufacture, not just to making some creating some cat files, and it impacts manufacturing step and it impacts assembly as well. And if you are able to uh, the what we are trying to build here, streamline this process, make it easy. So uh, that we are able to, so we are able to build this decentralized production, and so we can still these cars at an affordable price rather than two hundred, three hundred. So when you say gigapress, do you mean like a, a high pressure die casting thing, kind of similar to gigapress, or or is it something else? So it's a little bit different than that. Uh, so we are actually using gravity casting. For that, so but the idea is the same. Idea is to reduce the number of uh, connection points uh, and reduce the number of pieces in car's body. So if you look at the GigaCast, they have like anything from A pillar, B pillar, and C pillar, and uh, like it's it's a it's a unibody construction, and uh, they they did a great job by reducing the number of by the the components and the run, run, number of body parts. We are doing the same, but not like the metal forming. Uh, we are doing it through the gravity casting. So we are doing it through gravity casting that we are forming the entire body underground. And we are basically using some cost-effective uh, the, the aluminum casting, you know, old school aluminum casting into it. Our intention is to, of course, optimize it a little bit more, so make it more scalable. Uh, but that's our answer to gigacast it. Because otherwise, GigaCast will cost us a lot of resources, so we don't want to go into that path right away. But now we have our own own form of GigaCast, which is more cost-effective and um, fulfills our manufacturing needs. Yeah. What's something that you wish people asked about more when talking about Olympian? One area that we would like to uh, explore a little bit more is uh, how to use... AI in manufacturing. Not only the design part, but how to operate machines, right? How to operate machines. Uh, and how to, at the end of the day, design a one singular unit that can build basically the all parts of our vehicle in the one box. So that's our vision, right? So I wish that would be more companies will we'll ask us that question and maybe more founders. So we would like to connect with the founders who are basically solving these problems because we need that solution. So we can co-develop that. We can basically yeah, try it in our uh, prototypes, right? Existing cars, existing modules. Uh, so basically you don't need to deal with legacy auto EMs three, five years. Basically, hey, come talk to us. Let's develop a solution. Let's explore it together. And we can deploy it right away. So... That's that's our goal. So I I definitely would like to connect with more like founders trying to solve this AI manufacturing uh, problem. By the way, it's a good coincidence that you know like Y Combinator um, updated their call, so they are not more now more looking for startups uh, solving like leverage AI to solve physics, basic leverage AI to solve manufacturing. So we definitely would like to. Uh, explore that avenue more at audio. Uh And number two, so 
I think another thing that I would like to, uh, I would like people to ask me more about is that like, how would, how would build that complete the full image, how we build the Android of electric vehicles? I think we should, we, we deserve more questions about, around that, that area. So that an open modular platform for popular provide hardware providers, software providers, and even ML applications. Uh, so uh, we, we are building that system. It's available. And uh, we would like to people to be actually, the, uh, we would like more founders and more, of course, tier one, tier two suppliers to cooperate with us, collaborate with us. Uh, connect it, connect to Olympian OS, deploy your solution, and uh, bring it to the bring it to the real world, rather than keep it on your shelf for another five years. So that's why, like modularity aspect of the things, both of the hardware and software parts is also another thing that uh, we would like to get more uh, uh, more interest. Okay, Aaron, this is my last question. Um, it's a little weird, but I think it's really cool to ask founders and, and hear their response. But what is your current life philosophy? I am building, uh, so my first priority is family. I'm building a family. I'm building a, a company with a great vision. And, uh, and the mission is to, to elevate our civilization. And uh, that's my main goal. And how I operate in the life is uh, is a bit of balancing it between uh, building a family and building a startup, and never do injustice to the family members, because time will pass twenty thirty years later, and 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 uh, you will never bring that time back. So that's my true focus uh, in my life right now. And how I operate, you know, because I'm building a family. So every second I'm spending with the star. Of course, that's demanding job, right? Like 80 hours a week, sometimes less, sometimes, uh, sometimes more. But every second I'm standing with this uh, with this company I try to meet it I put all my brain and all my focus on every second so I make sure that I am not wasting a single second because each second that I'm wasting time means uh, a, a second that a time that I can't spend with my family so it makes even it makes me even more product right I'm learning new things every day, so I'm growing up. Of course, like I'm an electrical engineer and coming from the semiconductor part of the world. Uh, so, so many new things for me, especially in the automotive side of the things. And at the end of the day, automotive has a lot of parts from even textile, like seats, uh, interior, and, and many other stuff, right? So I'm learning fast and, uh, and, and I try to keep myself humble and always improve every single week, every single day. And mean every sec, every sec, every minute, and make myself productive in that case. So it's actually win-win for both my family and both for for the company as well. Awesome answer, family first. We did it. Uh, thank you for for recording this after after the fact after we recorded the initial episode a while ago. Awesome, Jason. Thanks for your time again, and you are doing a great job with uh, all the S3 episodes. Uh, we are following them all of them very closely, and again, great lessons for all the founders as well. So some of our friends are uh, solving really difficult problems in other areas, and uh, they're mainly learning from them, learning for their experience. Also, very insightful for me for our team at Olympian, and thanks for doing that too. It's very valuable. That's, that's really awesome to hear. Um, and that means a lot to me. Thank you.